What's going on guys? Brian's here. Today is Thursday, August 12th, 2021. Jumping right into it, I want to let you guys know this, in my opinion, is going to be one of the most important options trading videos you've probably ever seen. I'm going to show you guys three live scenarios going on right now in Tesla, Apple, and AMD. We're going to be talking about the calendar spread option strategy right off the back that's the name of the strategy it's we're going to look at an in-depth analysis on the calendar campaign and why i think it's probably one of the best strategies to trade especially if you're now starting out trading options honestly if i knew about this when i first started trading options i think it would have really helped the learning curve because the biggest problem that most traders face when they first start trading options when you first start trade when you first trade stocks and then you move over to options is this concept of time decay when you buy an options, even if a stock price is going in your direction, so in other words, if you buy what's called a call option, meaning you're bullish on a stock and the stock is going up, if it's going up too slowly, your option is continuing to lose value. It needs, an, it needs a big move and it needs to be moving quickly in order for your option to maintain its gains because options are a depreciating asset meaning they're constantly losing value. So the quickest way to counteract the biggest flaw with options would be to open up what's called a calendar campaign. And again, I'm going to be going over three scenarios right now and show you guys exactly. We're going to look at each individual contract and see why it works the way it does, as well as why i think when you're now starting to trade options it should probably be the only thing you trade until you really understand what's going on if you buy a stock in this case tesla if you were to buy tesla right here at this point it will just round it down and say it's going for 685 dollars if tesla comes all the way up to your targets which would be up here you don't have to worry about how fast it gets there. All you know is if you buy at 685, you're never going to be in the red as long as it doesn't come back below 685. That's not the same for options. In other words, if you were to buy a call option here, meaning you're bullish, I won't repeat too much because I'm going to already make the assumption that most of you guys have a basic understanding of what options are. So I'm instead of repeating myself too much, just understand you should know this already. A call option means you are bullish on the stock. And if I mention anything about a put option, which this video is not going to be about puts, I don't believe so. It means you're bearish on the stock. So put means you think the stock is going to go down and a call means you think the stock is going to go up. So in this case, let's just say you were to buy a call option on Tesla when it's at this price right here and Tesla gaps up the next day and as you can see it's a very good day your PL will be very green but then the next day if tesla was to pull back to here and then come up to here believe it or not you can actually be red on the trade meaning the call that you purchase here if it expires on this day here there's a high possibility that even on this push the moment tesla comes back to this level you're probably going to be starting you will probably end up having less money in your uh, PL then and you'll end up probably end up having less money in your account than when you actually open it here even though tesla is higher and that's just because at this point there's been one two three days of time that has passed by and if tesla then just consolidates which in this particular case it did you can see by friday by tesla closing here even though you would have opened this trade here and by friday tesla close here if you were not in the right strike price or anything you can actually end up losing a hundred percent of your uh your investment so how do we counter that again we're going to be looking at the calendar the calendar campaign or the calendar spread so using this live example this was last week this is a uh, thursday right here and this was last week friday this is a monday and this was a friday right so let's just say before the market closed you had reasons to believe or your technical analysis or whatever you use to tell you to enter a trade Again, this, this video also assumes that you understand the basic principles of trading and things like that. Um, taking a look at this right here, so you, you have reasons to believe that Tesla will go up, so you decide to enter a call option. And let's just say you're targeting uh, 730 is your strike because that's where you think Tesla is going to go or you target like a 750 call because it's deeper out the money and it's more affordable so it's cheaper instead of buying the 730 you buy a 750 but your intention is to sell at 730 you're never really intending to sell at 750 because you understand that's that's 50 60 70, 70 points away 75 points or something like that it's pretty it's a pretty uh a, a large target so you're happy taking the 730 as your target right you enter this call here and now here we are tomorrow is friday so we're talking a whole 
10 days later in terms of trading days and Tesla has not hit your target. And let's just say your contract was to expire tomorrow. Cause again, I'm shooting this video on a Thursday. So your contract expires tomorrow. You would, you could be looking at potentially being down probably 60%, 80% of your, uh, contract just because of so much time has passed by so let's take a look at how that actually looks on a chart what we're looking at is optionstrat.com this is by far one of my favorite tools to use i highly recommend this website i have the paid account it's not that expensive i use it all the time i love their an uh, analyze tab and things like that Thinkorswim has an analyze tab, but it gets a little clunky, especially during the market open hours. It ends up slowing down your computer and stuff like that. So I usually hop over to this website and I like to plug in my strike prices and stuff like that just to get an overall analysis of my PL chart. So what we're looking at right now is the August 20th expiration, and we're looking at the 750 call strike for Tesla. This is a simple basic strategy that most people know how to trade when they start trading options. It means that you just buy a call. In this case, we're just looking at one. This is the cost of the option, so $5.65, which means it's going to cost you $565, right? Let's look at the history of this option, and if we jump back two weeks, let's look back at our chart. What day was this? This was the 30th of July. So if we come right here and we find the 30th of July, that would be this day right here. So how much was this contract going for? We can see that right over here. At that point, the contract was going for, we'll say, we'll just make it an even $10. And right now the contract is currently going for $560, $565, but at that time it was going for $10. That means you're pretty much almost down $500. Bucks. You're down $435. So this right here should show you the complications of trading options. You bought the call option here. Tesla is now here, but somehow you are down almost $500. Again, time has passed by, right? If we jump back to this, this is what's called time decay. And this is what's hard to hold as an options trader, because if you're coming from trading equity, if you come, which is just the stock, you're used to just buying, setting a stop loss. In this particular case, you buy here and you're saying this is a sensible stop loss. Tesla should not come back below this zone. In this particular case, you got a really big explosive move. Now in a real, in a real world, I'm pretty sure any trader would have taken profits on Monday after a move like this, whether you trade options or not, might as well take some risk off because you got, you got a really nice win over over the weekend take some profit instead and then continue to hold if you're trading stock there's no reason to close this trade because you don't know how long uh you you, you know tesla still has high probability of hitting your profit target All right if we jump back to this right here let's take a look at what's called a bull call spread this is one of the basic i guess you can say building blocks to option strategies the bull call spread is also called a it's it falls under the category of what's known as a vertical spread so i'll just put v-e-r-t you can look that up vertical spreads is something are the one the building blocks to advance option trading or different option trading strategies so if we look at the bull call spread it would mean you would buy a contract that on one ex on a certain expiration and you would short another contract at the same expiration and you're using the premium you collect from this contract to help pay for how much this one cost if that makes sense let's take a look at this right here so this contract is costing you two dollars and ninety cents if you were to buy it however if we look at the the, the 250 call this is going for 70 cents so you can collect 70 cents in premium meaning 70 dollars and that would means you take $70 off of this right here, and that would bring this contract down to $2 and 20 cents, right? So in other words, so in other words, instead of paying 290 bucks, you can pay $220 to get this contract. It's just a way to reduce the cost of this. The trade-off to this is you're capping your, your profit target. As we can see right here, it means once Tesla reaches $750, you can't make any more money past that strike because you'll start losing on this contract right here. And this is all by expiration, by the way. So in this particular case, we're looking at uh, tomorrow's expiration, which is August 13th. So if we take a look at the historical chart for this, we can see, let's jump back again two weeks. Assuming we open this spread at this time right here, we would have been paying, we'll round it, we'll say about $3. We'll just put it in the middle. We'll say $3.50. And now we can see the spread close the day at $2.23, which means we've taken a loss on the trade because time decay actually affects vertical spreads 
the same way it affects just buying a call option if you just buy a call you need price to go in your favor quickly it's you don't need it to happen as quickly when you do a vertical spread but you still need it to move so next let's look at what's called the calendar spread which is the main strategy i think you should be trading the reason i still put it under the category of a quote unquote beginner option trading strategies because it's not that complicated you're just choosing the strike the same strike you would as if you were trading your target so in this case 750 we would be looking at 750 but in this case you just choose one expiration and another one and you buy the further out expiration and you short the one that's expiring sooner when you do this you create positive theta and theta is what represents time decay if we actually scroll right here we can see this trade has a positive theta if we come back to the original trade and we scroll here we'll see the theta is negative that means pretty much for every day this contract is going to lose 80 just just as you continue to hold it which is 80 bucks 80 cents if we come over here, we can see that this has a positive theta. So as long as this theta remains positive, it'll remain theta pro positive for probably another five days or so, which is why you always want to go one week to two weeks. You want to go two weeks out at least, and then you to, to short, and at least buy whatever is the, the following one. I like to keep them right next to each other because it keeps the cost down. If we were to jump to this, strike this expiration as we can see this is the cost of the trade if we were to jump to this right here it significantly increases the cost because buying the further buying the september calls are going to be significantly more expensive because it's an extra week so i keep them i keep them nice and tight to keep the cost down and as you can see this is actually not that bad it would cost 500 dollars versus when we bought the naked or we bought the option flat out right the 750 call it's pretty much going to end up costing that much anyway especially at the time we were buying it so if we look at this how does this affect the our pnl as we can see as tesla continues to go up to the strike price will actually be profitable you only really start to lose on the trade if tesla goes significantly past your the sh the, your your um strikes in this particular case this graph is telling us right here we'll say 780 tesla would have to be over 780 by August 20th for us to actually be red on the trade in that case it's a very rare situation to happen but you're actually not going to be down that much you're only going to be down on the contract that you shorted which is what's called the front month and your back month is actually not going it's still going to be green again we're going to take a look in this and a little bit more in, in depth on thinkorswim but i want to show you guys the historical chart for this let's go to two weeks and now let's take a look we would have opened the trade here because again this is the 30th right before the market closed i'm using like the closing print for everything and we can see at this point the contract will be going for just over four bucks we'll round it down to say four dollars and now we can see that it's going for five more importantly take a look at how the p l worked on this trade here so at this point it was going for four dollars it did hit a low of three dollars and 17 cents so it did lose some value even though tesla if we go back to the chart again it never came back to where we opened the trade so in theory tesla should be down here for the option to be that low but tesla is actually up here so there is a little bit of time decay in in, in that case the next way to counter that is you can go even further out so in this case again tomorrow is the 13th but in this case i went with the just two weeks out from when from from this week and three weeks out for to, to, to go long if we go a little further out now let's just say we jump all the way to september you can see the cost of the trade is pretty much almost the same if not a little bit cheaper that what's dependent on that will be for another video it's it's depending on the implied volatility and the differences between the two but that's where we start getting a little bit more advanced and i'm going to keep this video simple just take note that it's not going to cost you more by going further out so that already should tell you that that's a good sign if we look at our pnl graph we can already see how it's a little bit uh more stretched here if we were to then look at the historical chart for this we can see if we go to the two weeks ago we can see we would have been buying this spread here's the 30th right here's the market close we would have been paying at this point we'll say three dollars and a quarter and the spread is now going for four dollars and seventy cents so that is you're you're talking about you're up almost uh a hundred and fifty dollars per per contract that you bought if you just bought one you would be up at least 150 dollars 
And as you can see, more, more importantly, as Tesla gapped up on Monday and then it consolidated, look at how this P&L graph looks. It looks very similar to Tesla's chart. Tesla gapped up, it came back and then it consolidated, but it never came back down here. You can actually trade the options the same way you would trade the stock because now you're eliminating that risk of time decay that would actually take you out of a winning trade. How many times have you guys entered in an option and then closed it for on a day like this or something like that just because you're afraid that if Tesla came back to your same price, you know you're actually going to be in the red or in the negative. This is the easiest way in my opinion to counteract that now there are a lot of complex option strategies and things like that out there there's 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 a wide array of them but if the only one you wanted to stick to or you're now looking to get away from just buying calls and just buying puts and hope price goes in your direction and you're tired of getting eaten up by time decay and theta this is my this is this in my opinion would be the recommendation or potentially what should help your p l at the end of the year when you're tra when you're trading stock and you know it's easier to have a trading plan again enter here this is your stop loss this is your target probably once you get a gap up like this you then change your plan you probably draw a line here and say this is where you're going to stop out right so if i just uh make this let's change this make it brighter again and we can see, so Tesla gaps up, and now we tell ourselves this is our new stop loss. We don't need this to be our stop loss. Let's raise it. But you don't want to take a stop loss just because price hits a level, because this is most likely end up to end up being support. This was the previous week's high. This was the support from the gap level and things like that. So you want to tell yourself if it closes below this level, this is where you're going to take your stop. Not to mention the hard psychological level of 700. So this whole area here now, if it completely breaks down underneath here, that's where you're going to take the stop. That's how we would trade the stock, but we can't trade the option the same way unless we're doing something like a calendar spread. So now let's get an in-depth look at the options itself and why it actually works out that way. What we're looking at is the 750 strike price for August 20th. So this is the chart on Thinkorswim. This is the same strike price as this, exactly what we were looking at. If we take a look, this is the 30th of July when we would have opened the trade. We would have opened it for about $8.85. And now we can see it's going for $5.75. So a loss of $3.20. Whenever you open a calendar, the first contract you open is actually a short trade so in other words we would have actually shorted this strike so this contract by losing three dollars in premium it's actually a positive for our pnl this is actually how much we make and now if we jumped to the 27th of august this is the week right after which would be if we come to the spread right here we can see the 27th is what we're long and the 10th is the contract that we're short Here's the 27th. We would be entering this for $12.77. We can see it's now going for $10.08, which means this contract has lost $1.97 in premium. So if we do the math here, we would have collected $3.10 in premium from the first 750 call that we shorted and we're collecting and we're losing $197 on this contract but it ends up being a net positive of $1.13 so that's how we're actually up over $100 on this spread and this is just with one of them whenever you enter this type of trade by the way you're not manually putting all this in you're actually just going to your options chain depending on your platform you're just right clicking on it and you're choosing the strategy and it will load up the expirations and everything for you you just uh, tweak and adjust the strike prices that you want and things like that but this is it's not complicated to enter it's, it's, it's the same as like if you right click on your chart and you go to uh, buy or sell or you know you can you can put in different uh, shortcuts and strategies and you can save templates and things like that so it's not that complicated it sounds complicated if it's your first time seeing anything like this when you're looking at well how do you short a call option and things like that your system makes it very easy you can do this even on Robinhood. i robin hood actually makes it very easy to do it's it's kind of cute i'm not gonna lie i have a robin hood account on the side that i play around with you can do these types of strategies on Robinhood. you just need to make sure it's a margin account but this is one breakdown of how that works 
all right guys just as i was about to upload the video to youtube i figured i might as well it's only going to take you know a few seconds to show you guys how to actually open up a calendar i mentioned it and then i was like maybe you guys might watch this video and then you're like oh my god i know i mentioned how to do it but i might as well just show you it doesn't take that long so this is an options chain again this is thinkorswim every platform pretty much looks relatively the same if i want to open up the calendar on tesla i'm going to click this is my expiration august 20th scroll down to the strike price we were talking about the 750 if i were to right click on this and go to buy these are some of the strategies that pop up and i will be selecting calendar and as we can see what pops up here is the 750 strike the 750 strike they're both call options and this is the strike in which we're buying because this is the 27th you always want to make sure you're buying the further out uh expiration and this is the 20th which is the contract that we're shorting and this is the cost of it five dollars and eight cents and then you would just press confirm and send and if you wanted to change your expiration you would just move this out and say like maybe we want to buy the 17th and then you want to be shorting the 10th of september and as you can see this is four dollars and 78 cents which is exactly pretty much what we were looking at on option strat so it's as simple as that guys press delete just choose a different strike price if you say you think tesla's going to eight eight hundred for whatever reason you want to buy this just come down here come down to calendar boom and it loads it up right there for you you can change the expirations you can change the strike prices you can just say you change your mind you want to go to 790 you see it changes it right here because it has the name of the strategy already preloaded in as a template that's all now let's get back to the other part of the video if we jump further out now this would be the uh, September 21st contract. And if we jump to even further out, this is the, um, oh, sorry, this is the September 17th. And if we jump back to this one, this would be the September 10th. So this would be the example of the other calendar campaign. So the 10th and the 17th, a breakdown of why this one works. If we take a look here, there was a little speck on the chart. So assuming you got the last order of the day, you would have been getting this for $19. And because you shorted it and it's going higher than where you shorted it, this contract has actually increased in 76 cents in value, which means you're currently down 76 cents on this contract. But if we look at the one you're long on, you would have been purchasing purchasing this one for about 23 and a quarter, we'll say, and this one's going for 24.45. So this contract has appreciated in value about a dollar 16. Meanwhile, the other one you shorted has lost about 76 cents in um, premium, and as you can see, your profit is 40 cents overall on this spread if you're still holding. So right off the back, if this doesn't already put a grin on, grin on your face as an options trader, I don't know what will. The moment I first first started trading my uh, my first calendars, it was just consistency came increased a lot more because I realized if, if you're anything like me, you realize that your analysis on stocks, especially if you've been trading shares for a while, we tend to have really good analysis on where something is going at this point as a technical analysis, as a quant trader, any sort of edge in which you have, it's really not that hard to trade the shares most of the time. It's just there's a really hard learning curve when you first jump into options. And again, it's mostly because of implied volatility uh, and theta. And if, and if you guys want to see, this is actually me uh, right here it, as I'm trading Tesla. I'm accumulating shares now slowly on this day here, expecting the gap up here. Bought some shares here because we came back to this uh, pivot right here. I wanted to buy more shares at 700, but I chickened out earlier today. So that's why you didn't see this. But I'm I'm expecting Tesla to go higher. So I am accumulating shares and I am trading. I, have a, I currently have a calendar going on for the 730 by 730 because this is my target. But just so you can understand this is how it's easy to just buy the shares accumulate them while i have the options running in the meantime and running a campaign has allowed me to stay in this trade now let's look now let's look at very now we don't have to spend as much time because hopefully you guys understand this i just want to show you guys some other examples so you know it's not just one example here if we look at uh let's look at amd and Let's actually close out my trades because I bought a little bit here, bought some of the dip here, and then look to take some profits and stuff like that. But this is not necessarily just about my trading. It's just to introduce you guys and show you guys um, 
a principle that would probably help improve your trading. So in this particular case, AMD dipped down. The whole world was looking for the dip buy on AMD at 105. So assuming you happen to have been here and you were able to catch this dip right here and your stop loss is at this level and you're targeting, call it a 112 or even 110 or something like that, how do you stay in this trade? Because now AMD has spent three days. It has not gone to 112. Let's take a look at some options. If we were to buy the 110 call that expires next week and we take a look at his historical chart, this would have been essentially the dip in which you would have bought. You would have been buying this for, we'll say, $2. It's going for $1.54 right now. So you'd be down about $50 on one contract. So if you have four of those, you're down $200. Meanwhile, if we look back again at AMD, you bought this dip. AMD is higher, but your P&L is down very frustrating so what are you more likely to do psychologically end up being frustrated with the trade and closing it for a loss and then the next day amd ends up going here so to counter that let's take a look at some of the proper strategies we have a bull call spread this in this case you guys would know what this is at this point it's a vertical it means you buy you would buy one call expecting this to go in the money you're shorting another one to just help pay for this one in this particular case this vertical is the 110 by the 115 in other words you're saying you're going to maximize your profit at 115 and let's take a look at how this this uh, strategy traded you would have been buying this to say assuming you got the exact dip more likely you probably would have got filled about a dollar or so but as we can see here this is going for 94 cents so either you got the exact bottom or a dollar either way you either slightly break even you're slightly uh, red or you're just about break even on this one right here, even though AMD is higher. And now let's look at the calendar. We'll say you're targeting 111 because you're looking at the chart and you're saying maybe 112 is a little too far away. Uh, between 110 and 111, uh, 111 is more of you know where it's probably safer to take profit but if it gets to 110 you won't mind maybe holding or something like that but 111 just seems like the more sensible strike price to trade not to mention it's probably more open interest liquidity there's more volume there so you end up taking the 111 as your strike price let's take a look at the historical chart for that as we can see on the dip right here you'd be getting this for around 60 something cents we'll say 65 you don't even need the exact bottom in this particular case and you can see this is going for 90 cents why because the front month the front contract the way this works is the front contract is losing value faster than the one you're long. And that's why you short this one because of that phenomenon called theta. In this case, by running the calendar spreads, you're putting theta in your side. And this Greek right here is the one that crushes everyone's dreams. You're managing to maintain a positive delta, which means for every dollar that the underlying is increasing, that's how much the asset, the the uh, option is appreciating in value. If we go back to again something like Tesla and we take a look at the Greeks, we can see in this particular case, positive theta, positive delta. Now this is the further out one, so obviously the delta is not gonna be as high. If we go to this one, we can see you have a little bit higher delta, so that's why this spread will actually make a little bit more money. And then if we look here, at our theta is positive. So you're putting yourself in a situation where you don't have to go too far out. You can go a little further out if you want to, you don't know how long it's gonna consolidate or something, but you guys can see here, you're maintaining a positive delta and a positive theta. And that's one of the best situations which you can be in because then you can literally almost treat this like a stock. And I'm not, let, let, let's jump to this right here again, because I'm not sure if I entirely explained this enough or correctly. When you short this contract, this is the one that is ex ex expiring sooner than the other one. This contract is losing in value faster than the other one that you're long is losing in value. So even though both calls on Tesla, both 750 strikes lost in value, this one lost in value and this one lost in value, the winning secret in this trade here is the one that you shorted is losing value faster because this is the one that has a, a more aggressive time decay because that's just the nature of how options work. I'm not going to explain that in this video. Just you can look that up. You can search for time decay, search for theta on options and stuff like that. There's a lot of great YouTube videos out there. I might end up doing one on my own, but for now, I don't have anything that I can recommend you guys or refer to that I've done firsthand. But just understand that the contracts that are closer to expiration lose value faster, and that's what you're capitalizing on. So you don't necessarily need price to move in your favor super quick. So to wrap up this video, let's actually take a look at one last example here. Let's look at 
Apple. I actually took a loss on Apple this week because I did not run it as one of my favorite spreads. I just bought calls. I was expecting Apple to uh, hit 150 sometime this month, so I did buy calls. And I had to close out the trade because, as you can imagine, this time the K destroyed me here, right? So here we have a beautiful pattern, whatever. Let's just say we have this pennant. We have the gray line on my chart is VWAP. So let's just say my reasons for entering the trade right here is this breakout, and we have this explosion right here, and it's just a beautiful uh, extension but i'm not i like to swing i'm more of a swing trade i don't like to take too much profits in today and stuff like that so i'm holding for one one 150 i'll even take profit at 149 or something like that that's the thought process as i first enter the trade so i'm in these 150 calls now apple comes back and it pulls one two three four five six seven days of just nothing but price just chopping around and this is destroying it even though i'm in a monthly contract which means when a time on which i bought it, it expired in three weeks and it was still getting crushed because there was nothing happening so we enter the trade here sensible stop loss if i was trading this stock might be below here and as we can see obviously take some profit or something like that on an extension like this but there's no real reason to completely go flat the trade because it has not come back to the stop loss if we take a look at an option the 150 call if we were to uh pull this up right here let's go when was this this would have been the morning of the third so if we come back to here let's look at the historical chart and right here would be the third right so assuming it would have been just before the breakout so right here we're saying we get filled on this contract we'll say 49 cents it does hit a low of 43 cents but now it's going for 73 cents so this pain is not too bad to hold we're talking about the difference of from here to here almost five just five cents on this contract and now it's at here right the difference the the, the difference being if we were to just uh let's uh erase this um Let's get rid of the one that we're shorting. So we'll remove this. Let's remove the expiration. This is the contract in which I was long. Let's look at the historical chart. Let's go two weeks out and let's look at the third in which this contract was purchased. So purchase will say at a dollar. We can see this contract came all the way down to 40 cents. So I was down 60 cents on this contract. I had to take my stop loss in this area because this was just too painful. And as we can see now, Apple made its move finally today. And this sucks, obviously, because now we can see. I would still be in a green trade had I not taken the stop loss here, but I had to take the stop because the risk was just getting higher and higher with each day because of time decay. And had I just entered in some sort of a calendar like I normally do, the reason so you might act, you might be asking yourself why did i not enter a calendar in this one it's a it's a little bit of the trade-off is when you do the calendar you're obviously sacrificing some profits because if you just buy the 150 call and apple just goes straight to 150 obviously you're going to turn one dollar into four in like a day or two so 100 bucks into 400 dollars is something crazy same thing with tesla if tesla go went straight to uh 750 and you're in a 730 call and it does it in like two days and you bought it at 700 guess what you're you're pretty much turning 100 bucks into probably a thousand dollars or something like that so that's very attractive obviously which is why most people try to search for that but when you're now starting out trading options the time decay is really going to mess with you psychologically and it's going to be hard to be consistent with trading options so that's why i suggest going with this the trade-off again being you're not going to make as much money because remember you are going to be losing on one of the contracts even though you'll be gaining on the second contract so it's the fact that you're losing on one is what's eating away from your profits than if you just bought the the other one but again you can't think about the profits all the time it should be more so about the consistency of it all and if you can consistently trade equity and you really are struggling with options this is probably the solution for you guys so i really hope this video helps i wish i saw something like this when i first started trading options i wish someone explained this to me as well as i hope i did on this video i just did it all in one shot uh didn't really uh, uh put any pauses or anything like that in this video i'm treating it more so as a webinar i do have a private community i'm the creative quant trading app Dot com and i was going to do this video i was going to do a webinar and really break this down with the guys in there to really help them 
be more consistent with what the algorithm says at different places to buy and sell and things like that. But if we were to implement this strategy at certain levels, I think everyone would be a lot more consistent. So instead of just sharing it with them, I figured I'd just do a video that can help the entire trading community on YouTube. So I hope this helped. Uh, description down below will have any link to quant trading app or my discord if you're interested again i haven't been really posting much in the public section i've been mostly catering to the premium members really trying to just help them be consistent and really help them get their feet off the ground as options as successful options traders and introducing them to a lot of these strategies this is one of the beginner friendly ones but there's a lot more complicated ones so leave a comment down below and uh i hope to put out another video pretty soon for you guys but thanks for watching